Welcome to today's Inside Buy. I wanted to go over two things today. Uh, one, Mass Effect Legendary Edition came out. So I started right at like 11 p.m. on Thursday because it releases like midnight and then I'm in Central Time. Anyway, so I've put about 12 hours into it so far and it's got me thinking a lot of uh, things. So, well, one that, I mean, it's amazing, right? So far, so that's where my mind's going. So I'm sitting here thinking we haven't really had an RPG series like since then to really hit the levels that this series hit. And it came out forever ago. The first Mass Effect came out 2007. So what, how many years is that, right? Like almost 15? And we still haven't really hit that quality. It's kind of weird. Uh, some people argue the Witcher series. I don't think so, but whatever. But that aside, I mean, what? Like, even Cyberpunk still isn't to the quality of every little tiny attention to detail being as polished as it is. Like, Cyberpunk can go into many different levels of, like, really good at small attention to detail, but it is not nearly as well executed as it. To be as good as it is on, like, every metric is wild and still something we haven't yet to experience. Like, when I was playing through it, I'm sitting here thinking, like, man, I, I haven't played a game that is good. <laughs> um, I mean, back in the day, so I played Mass Effect 2. I played the first one for like an hour or two, but I did play and beat the second one, but that's the only one I actually finished all the way through. So um, I'm going back playing this, and I'm playing the first one again. And like I said, 12 hours in, and I've played enough to know. Like, So let's put it this way. I wrote something like, uh, what, yesterday of me being like, sure, I really could be jumping the gun. Maybe this was already the case either way. But with a few hours of Mass Effect 1 on Legendary Edition and having this series all come back to me with it now performing better and playing better and looking better than ever, by a margin bigger than what I was expecting too, by the way. Because I know they were using Unreal Engine 3, so I wasn't thinking that it was going to look as good as it does. I mean, I saw videos and screenshots, but we all know that like it always just way more exaggerated than what you actually get is what seems to be the case for the last, what, 10, if not 20 years of this. Anyway, but it actually does look really good. I mean, obviously you, it's a remaster and not a remake. So they're not actually like restructuring the game. It is still just the Unreal Engine 3 just cleaned up well with it. But wow, they did a lot with that in mind. I mean, if not hundreds, thousands of modifications to the game in terms of tweaking that, adding this, messing with this, whatever. But it got me thinking, like, it's kind of bad that we still haven't gotten anything since to this quality. It's kind of weird, right? Like, when I'm playing and I'm hearing the voice acting and I'm going through the codex and I'm seeing like all the extra lore that they put in, the smallest attention to detail to every little thing, uh, hearing the professional as music going on, <laughs> even the like NPC interactions, just walking around. I'm wanting to talk to every person because it's genuinely like a good conversation. It feels like it's like film quality levels of like delivery with not just how they're speaking, but what they're even talking about. And you're on the edge of your seat just wondering what's going to happen next in the story. Much less, like, I think the gameplay is really fun, and I think it's, like, really good RPG systems up in it. Anyway, I, I don't think we've gotten anything better, and I just thought that was interesting to bring up. But that aside, I also wanted to talk about, like, one more thing. Um... Game Pass. I've been thinking about Game Pass like a lot the last, I don't know, two or three months. Um, more than a half prior, I guess the best way to put it. But I'm sitting there thinking, it just hit 23 million subscribers 
Microsoft announced at like April 20th. And so that's like almost a month ago at this point. So I'm sure it's 24, if not 25, something like that, right? But that's a lot. That's a lot, a lot. Now, there's a lot of inner workings and discussions on, hey, are they making money? Are they not? Um, Because they pay a lot to get the games up on the service. And with 23 million, even if, I don't know, a lot of them are like that first month trial, right? You have to think that. But, I mean, over the course of year, there's no way there's 23 million first months, right? (laughs) Um, $10 is like what it costs on a single platform. But if you want it on like multiple platforms, as well as Xbox Live, pay 15 a month. But at 15 a month, you could pretty much, like, at most, it costs about, what, three games costs in a whole year, yet you're getting, like, what, two to three hundred games. And it's no small feat. So I wanted to bring up this right here. Give me a second. So this screen alone I wanted to show. It, that way you just get a good idea of what's going on here. <laughs> and obviously this isn't everything. This is just on the front page here, right? But this in particular, so with like recently added, right? All of these are good games. None of these are just throwaway titles. Right there at the end, though, I have been playing Second Extinction. Wow, it's fun. So it's like four-player co-op kind of deal. And think like Borderlands in the way the gameplay set up. But you're, it's just all dinosaurs. All the enemies are dinosaurs. The graphics are amazing. Let me see. Let's look at this. You'll get the idea here. You fight big T Rexes. You fight. I mean, I don't know the names of dinosaurs, so I would name more. <laughs> but the, uh, you pick different classes and it's just a super fun co-op shooter but it's far better quality than what you would expect and it isn't game preview as you see here I've been playing Dragon Quest Builders 2 like a lot I'm about 20 hours into it I've been playing the last like I don't know week or two and uh, then I've been going back to Dragon Quest 11 which is also on Game Pass but Remnant um, this latest one here they just released like the next gen uh, upgrades and that's why it also hit Game Pass here again because it's I guess relevant again now Um, games stay a while too but look all all I'm really trying to get at though is this like the values crazy good of what you get compared to what you pay and it's actually kind of causing an issue because a lot of I just keep seeing report after report after report of people being hey um, this is going to basically change the industry and a lot of negative ways um, obviously there comes positives but there's just as much negative discussion as there's positive discussion because they're not worried because people are subbing to this are they not going to buy games anymore at 60 or the new $70 price now And they're just going to get this instead. So there's, um, let's look here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So this is a good uh, example here. Uh, This guy's saying, since the launch of Next Gen, so he he works for IGN, been a main editor there for about, I don't know, 10 years or so. Since the launch of Next Gen, I've done complete 180, and at this point, I wouldn't really recommend a PS5 to people. Not until it has more games. Get an Xbox Series X and sign up for Game Pass. I play on Xbox Game Pass literally every night and I have yet to turn on my PS5 in two months. Returnal looks great, 
but it is $70. Game Pass is just too good to ignore. PS5's library will get there someday, and it will be expensive. Um, but this right here harkens up a bigger question of, and a bigger concern, because uh, they're hitting levels to where, hey, all you gotta do is sub to Game Pass, and there's plenty of good enough titles on there. Let's Let's go back again to what I was showing earlier. So, I mean, no one can say Doom Eternal is, like, not a good game, right? Or, what, Dead Space, right? Titanfall 2. Titanfall 2 has gotten a really big boom lately, which is awesome. Um, I've actually been playing it on my Xbox because it got 120 FPS boost. And, wow, it's great. So, <laughs> I have my PC, of course, and I play on there. And I can do about, like, 90 to 100 um, on like some current games, but it's really pressing it. And honestly, anything that's come out in the last like six months to a year, no way am I playing it on anything like 30 to 60 FPS or whatever. But obviously, Titanfall Tools is an older game, but I, I, I don't think there's no, I can't do Titanfall 2 at 120 on my PC. But anyway, um, Jedi Star Wars Fallen Order, right? Uh, I mean, Squadrons, if you haven't played Squadrons. But you get what I'm getting at, though. These aren't just some throwaway titles. And they're paying a lot of money to get these titles, too. So, you know, I get it. That comes along with it. Like, Dirt? Dirt 5 is great, right? But I'm sure they pay to get that. Because of all the stuff that you're paying to even get onto the service. And there's a whole lot of mess revolving all around that. But Microsoft's got the money to do it. That's the thing. So if it was any other company, they w this wouldn't be possible, right? But it's Microsoft. Like, the Xbox division, what? Like, 5% of their profits? I doubt it's even that much, right? I have a PS5 and Xbox Series. An Xbox Series S, actually. I haven't even been able to get the X. But... That's what makes it even funnier is... So, Demon Souls, I played that and beat that. Returnal, I'm kind of like iffy on. I don't know. We'll see. It's 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 nothing I'm like super hyped for or care to play that much. But who knows? Maybe it's maybe it's better than what it seems. Um, but, what? That's about it, right? Ratchet and Clank hits like in the summer. But you're talking like two exclusives a year like high end and, and where <laughs> look on the flip side of that you can instead of what buying two or three games in a whole year is what it would cost to have game pass going all year long and you're getting hundreds of titles and good ones at that right so a lot of people are switching over. I think I saw uh, an article here. Let's find it. So, two of them here. This first one here, outsold it January. PS5 again getting outsold. And it was it in April? This was May 13th when it came out. I think people I'm seeing it of Game Pass alone is like causing people to jump ship and really weird because I mean I guess every time it seems to flip flop in terms of PlayStation being ahead or Xbox being ahead and each generation they swap back and forth and it's weird that of all things Game Pass is the one this time to push Xbox up in the lead and now it's becoming this whole worry over the industry as a whole on, okay, well, Game Pass, your PC, your phone, your tablet, your Xbox system, right? They were said like a few months ago, I think summertime they'll have it to where it's just an app on your TV and you connect, you know, controller through that, like through Bluetooth. And I mean, at this point, Microsoft doesn't even need to sell the system, and all they do is need to just sell Game Pass, and what? If they're not profitable now on Game Pass, 
when will they be right 30 40 50 million they'll keep pushing as hard as they need to push till they hit the levels to where they are turning a profit and the only way you get the numbers higher is getting more day one games right so here's another day one game coming this game's coming out june 22nd and will be day one game pass i'm gonna throw up some gameplay here I was watching this earlier today trying to see what this even was and it's looking pretty cool it's a uh, four player online co-op just action RPG um, but it's yet another title right I think that's it I think it's what I was trying to get at all I was trying to talk about and um, we'll see uh, but I'm thinking there's a big shift happening right now, and I think a bunch of people are jumping on board, obviously, right? They're at $25 million at this point. So, maybe in a year or two, right? Game Pass will just be a thing that everyone uses, whether they have an Xbox or PlayStation or not, right? Like, you can go buy a PS5. You don't need to buy an Xbox because you can just play Game Pass on whatever you want to play it on, right? Um... It makes it a little easier and a little nicer just going ahead and getting a system all for it. But I think it's going well beyond just a matter of like, oh, them trying to sell a system to you, right? Obviously, they're trying to just get you to just be a part of Xbox as a whole, right? So anyway, that'll do it. I'll see you guys till next time.